Thanks for clicking on my video. What you're about to see is a super candid conversation with me and my friend Mario. Uh, we're both strategists who come at strategy from different angles. I got my start with words and he got his start in design, but we're both trying to get to the same place. This conversation is full of gold nuggets and I think you're gonna find this to be super helpful. Here we go. All right, I'm here with Mario Quesada and uh, we are talking all things strategy today and as well as many other Man. things. Yeah, are you ready? Are you, are you ready to <laughs> I'm nervous now. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mario, you and I were rapping a, a little while ago and we were talking about how it was really interesting that you and I are both are, are strategists and we're both ultimately after the same goal for our clients. We have a lot of the same processes and teachings, but we, we both came to this, to this kind of meeting place from di very uh, different worlds. You came from a design background and I come from this, this land of words. I'm not a designer. I don't know anything about design. I love designers. I want to be a designer. I like hanging out with designers, <laughs> but uh, I don't know anything uh, about design. And so why don't you, if you would, just take a moment and, and talk a little bit about your journey uh, as a designer and how you, how you came to this thing called brand strategy. Yeah, um, accidentally. I think is the kind of like overview word for me <laughs> falling into brand strategy. Um, I was actually, I think it, it just was caught over, over the, the course of my career. Now it's weird to say that even though I'm 46, I have a, I've had a career in design um, starting at, you know, 1996 when we were both babes, but um, uh, I, was in art school. I started working um, at uh, Disney.com very early on in the 90s and started learning, started really getting thrown into um, very strategic positions as far as um, why we were doing what we were doing, how to explain that, how to uh, design that, and how to um, build these experiences in this new world called the internet. And so because I was, I was 19, I'm, I was, I was thrown into this world so early. It was, it was really the way I learned how to explain design, uh, when I was building, when I was building my animations in flash, when I was like doing GIF animations where I was doing website designs, whatever it was, branding, um, it, it really became the vernacular of how I used um, or what I used to, to speak about my design. Um, even though I did come from a design place, I was, you know, I'm a designer. I, I, I do illustration. I, you know, I'm, I, I love typography and visuals. That's my jam. That's, you know, that's really what I wanted to do. Um, but early on, I was just thrust into this world of, of figuring out how to explain a user's journey and a user's place and a user's experience uh, in every touch point of what I made and having to explain that at such an early time, uh, such an early point in my then budding career uh, over time, it was just, it grew into really understanding what the client needed and choosing the right questions to ask and how to build rapport and how to connect relationally with people to, to get them to earn trust so that we can build the best thing for them and solve their problem. Can so I, can I ask you a question really, right there? On that, yeah, yeah on that absolutely. Topic? Yeah. Uh, not, not to interrupt, but you're talking that through your, your career, you started to learn, hey, like I have to describe what this thing I'm making, like how that actually matters in a user journey and how that impacts, like, why is that important? You know, because there's so many people <laughs> and, and, and the reason I ask, like, I think so many people just design, they, they, and I don't yeah. want to say just design because I, I don't mean it to be uh, uh, demeaning in that way, but I mean, they rush to design, they, they execute, yeah. they, they, they put things out without thinking about that user and that user. So why was that important to you? Like, what were you seeing at that point? Like, why was that important? It's funny because in the beginning, it, it didn't realize why it was important. Um, I was just like, I wanted to just be a cog in the wheel, but because I was at uh, a studio that demanded a certain level of 
um, explanation as we were building things out and our teams were huge and we had to do things that were that were seen by literally millions of people every time we put anything on the internet people you know millions of people were were looking at these things because it's Disney um, we had to understand what they needed and and so for me early on I just wanted to be a cog in the wheel and to make make cool stuff but as I learned how to how to speak the language of our users, it allowed me to make everything so much better. It allowed me to create experiences that they both enjoyed, they were excited about, and they learned something from, and it was easy for them to navigate in, in every which way, whether they're in a story and they're, they're kind of navigating this internal story or they're going around a website or um, clarity was king and, and really design was, was not an afterthought, but design thinking became the forethought, right? It was like thinking in a design sense of how to help these people get to the information that they needed and they wanted. So that's why it was important. Um, that is, is why I learned. And as I started and starting there and kind of like being forced to start there made everything much easier. Um, I was always asking why. Why do you want to do this? Why, why not that? Why have you done this? Why are you doing this now? Um, so a lot of whys, a lot of what questions, you know, what, what have you tried already? What is it? What is, uh, what's the point of all of this? What's your goal behind making this blue rather than pink? Like, you know, like we know it should be. Um, so just certain, certain questions had to, had to be asked at a very certain, at a very early point in my career. And that really formulated my thinking around design a lot more than just going to design school. Yeah, and I, I think of design so often, you know, I think the schema in our brains, the way we think of the word design is visuals. But for me, yeah. when I think of design is exactly how you just described it in the terms of design thinking, which is really designing solutions to problems. And that very often takes the form of uh, visual, visual identity or visual creation or something graphic, but it could also be words. It could be something totally different. It could be a solution to a problem. And so that, I mean, were you different? Like, were you, and maybe you didn't realize it at the time, like asking all these why and what questions, because that doesn't always seem to be the norm. I wasn't, I was part of a, a really tiny team and I wasn't different in my team necessarily because we were all we were all there's three of us that were 1920 there were we were we were kind of like high school friends and we just kind of found ourselves in this place um and we were learning and kind of growing together in that in that place i found that i was different when i stepped out of that place and i was like interacting with other designers or even people because I, I stepped out of art center to work at disney for a time and we had talked about this before. Then I went back later, like uh, years later, but stepping out of Disney, stepping out of this design thinking world and into interaction with just normal everyday businesses or companies, or even my peers that were still in design school, I realized that how, how intensely my thinking had changed and into knowing that design thinking wasn't just how do I solve this logo problem? It was, it was a thought-based problem-solving thing that I was doing. Um, and it was, I couldn't stop it anymore because it was, it was so powerful in the way I solve people's problems. And that was what I, that was what I focused on. I didn't focus on typography necessarily. I didn't focus on fonts. I didn't focus on colors. At that point, I was focusing on like, how can I make this thing do what you need it to do in the best way possible? Um, and even before that, how do we make whatever it is the thing that you need that to do, right? So how do we make, how do we make, maybe, maybe it is your words, maybe it's simply your words, maybe your everything else is beautiful and fine, you're just using the wrong verbiage, or maybe your website is black and it should be white, or maybe it should be you know, in a totally different language, who knows, but I did know that I was asking those questions that my peers that were still in school hadn't learned yet to ask, which is, which is really interesting to me because they were in school doing the thing that I should have been doing at that time too. Uh, I mean, it's super interesting to me hearing you talk, like 
that wasn't me, you know, like I was an, execu <laughs> I was an executor. I was like, I wasn't really thinking why or what I was thinking like how, and, and the how being like, how do I get this job? How do I deliver? How do I just, you know, meet, you know, the expectation of whoever wanted whatever. And I look back and, you know, I wish someone at a much earlier age would have said, no, no, no. Like the right questions to ask are, are why questions and what questions and to really be thinking about that you're solving a problem. You're not doing a, a task. And I know for me, I mean, it was many years before, like, I really thought in that way that, um, you know, we're solving a problem, not just delivering on a, on a specific request or task, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I definitely was, I was still young and I was still, you know, maturing in every way possible, honestly. Um, but I hadn't really understood that Disney had had that kind of mindset, like just complete shift in my brain to where I was asking these types of questions. Um, I was still concerned with all the same things. I was like, how is this going to happen? Blah, blah. But, but I was also asking these, these what and why questions all as well. And uh, it seemed to, it seemed to be a much better place that I would end up than just, just asking, okay, how fast, what's your budget? You know, um, when do you need it by all the other questions that we would typically ask for like producing things. Um, so that, the whole the whole piece of the whole piece of the what and the why um, I didn't think about that I guess I wasn't cognitive I wasn't consciously doing that it was just happening um, and so uh, but I would still you know obviously it as I grew into it and I started realizing that the power of the what the power of the why um, uh, really trumped um, just producing and and jumping right into the design. Um, yeah, it was, it was it was interesting growing growing into design that way and growing into strategy that way. I came at it. I think of it. I think of coming at it from the backside anyway because I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I was like, I discovered that I was doing strategy. I was like, oh, that's what I do. There's a word for that. Okay, I get it. And let's let me learn more about how to do that better. Um, but uh, you know, I, I I came at it from a design problem. I came at it like, how can I fix your your imaging problem, your design problem, your logo problem, branding problem. Um, but then realizing that doing deeper dive strategy for branding opened up every door possible for the client, also for me as a work, but that was almost a byproduct at that point. I could, I could solve bigger problems and help them really understand everything about themselves first, and which is really, I love where to start. I love starting there is like, starting internally with the team and internally with their purpose. That's where I hit that hard because after that, it's an extension. Everything's an extension. At that point, their logo is an extension of their purpose, right? So it's, it's, it's been a really weird journey for me, just like discovering later that, oh, that's what I do. And then just pushing into that. Yeah. I mean, it's so awesome the way you describe that. And you know, I think back to when I was younger, I think I was scared to ask why. I think I was scared to ask what questions. I didn't want to seem like either that I didn't know, which is always okay, you know, and or, or that um, or that I was pushy or that I was driving, you know, driving to different answers. And so I just think that that's such, you know, I never saw myself when, when I was younger in my career as a problem solver. And I love that you talk about how you came to strategy accidentally. I actually have a carousel coming out day or tomorrow or whatever that's really like like I refer to myself as I'm an accidental brand strategist because you know very similar you can replace uh design with writing and and uh building businesses but you know you and I had some uh overlap in 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 the movie business and even at Disney I'm so so surprised we did like maybe we did bump into each other who who knows <laughs> who knows at that point yeah I mean my big why and what questions were more personal I was like like well why do I want to be in the movie business is this what I want to do for the rest of my life and so for you know and I was like I don't know. And I had, that was my only experience up until that point. And so I went out and tried some other things and started a business and, and that actually turned out to be pretty good. And, uh, but along the way, everyone kept asking me to help them tell their story. And I think I was still in that, like, okay, all right. Like kind of that, like golden retriever mode, you know, like, yeah, 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 I'll do it. I'll, 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 I'll whatever you say, you know, I, I want to help. I want to be helpful. And, and, and they were self-diagnosing that they had a story problem, but you know, for me, what I found was that like, if 10 people came to me asking me to 
tell their story. It meant like 10 different things, you know, it could have meant brand, which I didn't <laughs> know at the time. It could have meant social. Yeah. It could have meant working on their purpose. Like, they, like, you know, they were having that fundamental intrinsic question, like, who are we? And they called that their story. And so I think I kind of fell into all this and I was starting to ask why and what questions, because I had a lot of bad engagements, you know, like I had like a lot of, <laughs> like, like, as I rushed to execute, I had either disappointed clients or I was disappointed, you know, it just, I, I, I felt lost and I didn't understand it. And I started asking, you know, these kind of why and what questions and, and much like you, uh, then things started to get better, but I, I didn't, I wasn't really connecting the dots that this was brand strategy or anything like that. And I actually assumed that since I hadn't worked at an agency, since I didn't have that pedigree that, I mean, I'd heard about brand strategists, but I, that wasn't me. I wasn't a strategist because I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't ever have that title. And then I, I didn't know that, that you could just, you know, become one. And, uh, and looking back and looking back and doing some self-reflective discovery as the business started to grow, I was like, oh, wait a second. Like all our best engagements, all what we do, the value we provide is through brand strategy. And for, for me, it was really this kind of Venn diagram of, of being able to write and tell stories, but also to understand business, you know, and to being an entrepreneur and understanding like, oh, wow, like businesses like exist for certain reasons. And there's things that drive the business and these things that we're doing, working on websites and logos and and, and other creative, which I love just as much as the next person. I love a good hat, as you can see, you know, I, mean, <laughs> I love it. Like, like nothing better when a client's logo goes up on a hat, but um, it has to have a job. It has to have a purpose. And, yeah. you know, and that's kind of how I figured it out. And that's how I came to it. But it was kind of taking my lumps. Like I had like a lot of bad experiences because, because, because I rushed in, I was super excited. I was like, you want to work with me? Like, that'd be great. Like, let's do it. <laughs> You know, and, uh, and, and, and obviously like when you just kind of rush to tactical execution, it's, it's really tough. Like, you know, and then, and then yeah. I'd be sitting there with a blank screen, like, I, I don't know, <laughs> you know, like I don't know what the <laughs> create or I don't know what this client needs. Cause we hadn't done, uh, you know, yeah. a lot of the strategic work that all those why questions ask. Yeah. The, the, the self-diagnosis thing is, was, was really hard. I think as a young creative, it was really hard to do to get around and to kind of uh, silence almost and not, not, not a bad way, just like, but there's a, there's a self-diagnosis thing where you, you cannot, you can't take their, their diagnosis at face value. Right. And, and as a young creative, I didn't really, I didn't really know that so well. So when I felt that they had all the answers to the whys and the what's, I'm like, okay, well, it seems as though, they understand what they're doing. And so those were the worst engagements when I didn't, when I didn't dive into what I, what, really what I thought I should do is dive into the what and the why and, and kind of extrapolate from them the true story of what they, they need to do. Um, but I, you know, as a, as a, you know, you're 19, you're 20, you're, you're dealing with these companies that, that have a lot of money on the line for them. And and they're saying what they need and they're the ones paying the check. And, and so you're like, okay, well, it seems like this is what they need. I'm going to execute on what they need. And I had my share of, you know, major burnings, right? Cause you're just, you're just, you're there. And I remember working for this one small ad agency in, in Long Beach and, and I was just a hired gun and, and they're like, Hey, we need, we need this and we need that. And I'm like, okay. And is, is, you know, why are these things necessary? Oh, it's because we have to run this campaign. And it's all part of this and it all fits. I'm like, okay, well, obviously it seems like you guys have done your due diligence. Let's, let's get to work. And I would just dive in. I just dove in. And um, I, this was like the last time this happened too. And I dove in and, and did all this work. And um, I went in and I, I showed it to the, to the creative director. And he's like, he's like, oh man, like, you know, this is cool, but that's not, a, that's not what we want at all. I'm like, well, you said this, 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 and this, and here it is. And he's like, well, you know, well, we have to consider. So he was ke keeping all this kind of different, very important information from me um, that he just didn't share um, part of the brief that, that I wasn't aware of. And so I literally had to do the project over with him standing over my shoulder because it was just that he wanted me to be his his hands at that point um i was supposed to have 
it was there was a budget on the on the project and i i ended up working like three times as long as it was supposed to take and i was like look this is how long it took me and he's like i'm like you were here he's like well, but you didn't give us what we wanted so i just totally got burned on that project i think i i don't even think i got paid because i was just like so pissed and i was just like you know what forget it i just i just walked out and and you know they, they got they got a, a less than adequate design I, I can't remember what it was for but um but it was because i didn't i was young i was naive and i didn't i didn't stick to my own process and i didn't get the information i needed to execute correctly for them um but yeah i definitely had plenty plenty burnings of <laughs> of uh of clients and and situations that that um but with every every situation that that went bad i learned a little bit more right i, I was able to like get my get my druthers a little bit more and and can I could stand on my own a little bit more every time too. So, but yeah, I think as, as young creatives, we're, we're all, everybody's going to get burned at some point. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's not to be, not to discourage you if you're a young creative, but uh, you're going <laughs> you're, you're to you're gonna take your lumps. You have uh, to. Yeah. And I think, you know, that, that raises a really interesting point about, you know, the toolkit or the makeup of a strategist and, you know, everyone has to start somewhere. But for me, where I look at my value, it's that, yeah, I've taken a lot of lumps. I've gotten involved under the hood in some businesses, you know, prior, I didn't know what I didn't know for so many years. And I mean, where do you think that that really fits in as far as becoming a, a well-rounded strategist? I mean, do you have to have some experience and or take your lumps or can you come in fresh and, and fresh eyed and, and apply, you know, these tools and these frameworks? I can only speak to this uh, from experience. Um, and I think experience is key in everything that you want to do. The more experience you have, the better you're going to get, right? So taking your lumps uh, doesn't necessarily have to be negative either, right? It, it could just mean you're, you're, you're climbing the hill, you're climbing, you're, you're doing, you're putting in the hours, you're, you're putting in the work. Um, you can come in as as supreme god designer super strategist and still fail you know you're you're going to take i think taking your lumps is is living living through an experience and learning from it so i think it is imperative to be excellent you need to you need to learn by doing um because if you think you have it all figured out, it's it's not going to take long before you realize you don't, <laughs> right? It's just totally. not. It, you can't you can't you can't uh, deny experience in in any in any profession. But I think brand strategy is definitely one of those things where you're dealing with such big ideas and big, uh, big, full uh, stories of a brand of a company that you you're not going to always get it 100% right. Um, and, and that's okay. As long as you learn how to recover and get it right. You know? Um, so yeah, I think experience is, is, is huge. It's, it's always, I think it's, I think experience people overlook experience. People want to start at the top and stay at the top. And the ones that start at the bottom and get to the top are usually the ones that are, that are the best at it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that a little bit, this idea of Sometimes you try your best, but it doesn't always land, you know, because yeah. uh, I'm, I'm guessing you're, you're similar to me. Most brand strategists are in the sense that like when I get involved with an engagement, we're talking about purpose and, and values and every, like, I, I get so emotionally involved and, 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 uh, and, and it means so much to me. And like, and like, and I think that's part of being a good strategist is that you have to have that empathy and that, you know, that EQ level where you can really fall in love to a sense with a company and, and find what's the best about them and, and what makes them tick. And, and for me, like, if it doesn't go, like, if they don't carry me out of the room on their shoulders and they're not, <laughs> and they're not like, yes, you know, like anything less than that. Is a failure. Mark, 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 Mark. Yeah. Yeah. That's anything it. less of failure, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, and obviously there's, that, that's not the case and some people react differently, but you know, I'm still learning how to like take, uh, criticism and feedback when it doesn't go well, how to rebound and, 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 and stay, uh, stay positive and in the game and give them what they want. Like, how do you, how do you do that as well as like, how do you balance 
maybe that you're seeing a different path. And, and I never go in thinking I'm all knowing, but sometimes I'm like, look, this is a better way than maybe like what you're suggest suggesting. But there comes a certain point where yeah. they have a client, you know, it's like, how, kinda, how do you balance all those things? That's, that's an interesting, that's an interesting question. Um, how do I, balancing what I see from outside the bottle, from relative to what they feel that they're in, inside the bottle, uh, is a, it has to be, it has to be skated with a fine line, right? You have to really be, you have to be both in their world, but also give them perspective on their world. Um, I like to say, so um, it's, it's hard to get people to change their mind about who they think they are, even if who they tell you they are is someone totally different than they're presenting, right? And I'm sure you've I'm yeah. sure you've come across that. As strategists, we're gonna we're gonna see that all the time. You know, they're they're gonna say that they're this beautiful philanthropic company that believes in you know um, recycling and and changing the earth, but they have a really bad sewage problem and you know they're they're not they're not carrying through through their, everything that they're living out their their so-called core values through their company so um how do i manage that um i manage that by just asking them questions that they have no other recourse to answer very truthfully to and then point them back to really what they said and so it's hard for it's hard for a brand or a company or anyone really to refute the words that they have spoken. Um, so I'll just go back to saying, "Hey, this is what I see X Y Z," and they may they may balk at that. They may they may say, "Well, that that doesn't sound like us at all." And I and I will go back to our conversations where I will have said, "This is this is what you have outlined for me." this is what you said yourself, A, and that's where I extrapolated this statement from. B, this is where you said this, and this is where I, I pulled that from. Am I off? Am I, am I wrong here? And either they'll, they'll realize that the way they think of themselves is not the way they are presenting themselves. And that's really what I think my, my biggest strength is, is helping people see just having that clarity on who they truly are and who they truly want to be and, and bridging the gap between the two. Right. And, and that's, that's really where, where I like to, to help people the most because sometimes they just don't know. And they're really, when they, when they realize that, and it's, and it's something that they really want to accomplish, then they're really thankful because at that point they really want to be the company that they, they see themselves as um, but there's work to get there, right? How do you, how do you deal with that stuff? Yeah. I mean, well, you know, this topic is, is a little easier to answer than like, if it doesn't go well, or if, you know, people aren't happy with the, with the output, I get, you know, I, I get sad and I'm sensitive, but uh, the, the, this topic, you know, it, it's much <laughs> the too. same way. It, it's holding up a mirror. It's, it's reflecting where they're at. I mean, I think part of, and this is what I was getting at a little bit before, I think like, with experience comes the confidence to say, look, I see something different uh, and I don't agree with you respectfully, you know, uh, and doing it in a respectful yeah. way, but saying, you know, holding up a mirror and saying, look, I mean, is this real reality or is this aspirational? And um, a lot of times it's aspirational. A lot of times it's, they saw it on someone else's website, you know, like, <laughs> and, and so working through those same things. Best. And yeah. And I think, that you know that's what's so great about strategy is it's just about having conversations and it's about getting to the truth and it's about um you know really getting to the essence and i always remind people that it's not that they can't get there you know and and, and i i love this yeah. idea of like hey we're philanthropic or um we recycle because I work with a lot of lifestyle and outdoor brands are always talking about that. And for the most part, that's ingrained in their DNA. But I mean, there's been times where I've challenged businesses and, and like, well, well, show it to me, right? Like, show me how you're philanthropic, show me how that you're environmentally friendly, your packaging seems really bad. I mean, again, am I in the, to, to echo your <laughs> oh, words, man, am, I, yeah. am I wrong, you know? And so let's talk about that because, uh, you know, I also remind clients that 
the outside world, you know, I find branding from yesteryear, you know, the Don Draper years to be so like magical and mythical because it was one directional, you know, you could create this yeah. idea and you put it out to the world. And even if someone didn't disagree, they were just complaining in their, their living room in New Jersey. It never got past that, that bubble, you know, but now people are so quick to call BS. They're so quick to call you on something that isn't true or inauthentic that you really need to be uh, on point. So that's something too that I talk, you know, we're going through this. I was like, look, if I was to put this out, you know, out in the public and someone was to do a little research, would you get in trouble on us? Uh, would they flame you or yeah. would you be able to, to stand by it? And, and a lot of times that's also a good mechanism because they're like, oh, you know, like, yeah, I mean, someone, <laughs> someone dug on this. And, and then conversely, I've worked with some companies that are really, really smart, like in that regard. And they're like, look, we can't, you know, I'll be pushing them to say something. And they're like, we can't say that because we can't necessarily stand by it. And we are not going to say anything that we can't stand by. And I think that's super great too. So yeah. I'm always really impressed. I'm, you know, I'm always really impressed with smart clients. Not that all my clients aren't smart if you're, if you're watching this, but like sometimes, you know, <laughs> we, we just work with some marketing organizations of people that, you know, I learned so much from and going through. And those are actually some of my my favorites because I'm like, wow, like, you know, well, what am I doing here? Right. Like, why, 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 why are you hiring me? <laughs> you're, you're, all, you're all so smart. And I, I really love that too. Um, so just going back to the beginning, the actual, you know, question was like, what happens when, when our, our reveal or ta-da falls flat. Right. And it's like, it's like, I, I go back to double checking everything that I know. And so I'll go back and say, well, this is where I got this from. This is where I got this from. And this is where I got this from. And so I'm very careful to walk them through um, a solution. And if at any point, I'm, I'm very open with when I, when I start presenting strategy, I'm very open with like, hey, look, this is a living document. This is, this is meant to spark this is meant to inspire you and spark conversation. If at any point you feel that this is off, let's stop and have a conversation and how we can fix it or amend it or, or change it so that it does represent you better. So I'm always doing a check and balance with them as I move through my, my, you know, my document for them. Um, and then they, feel way less pressure to accept anything that I'm saying as like, okay, this is, this is the way it has to be. And, and, and so if they're upset about something, they won't let it stew They'll say, actually, you know, I, I don't, I don't really, I don't really feel that that represents us very well. So we'll stop right there. And so I, I don't really do a full on, Hey, reveal, boom, here you go. See you later. It's more about like, as we go through, I'll, I'll walk them through a journey and make sure that I'm I'm walking them through the journey that I want them to see, and so they understand every every place that I, everything that I've actually um, put up for them, is coming from a place of their speech, their heart, their company, and just revealing it a little bit more to them so that they can actually see the the breadth and the width and the height of it um, as beautifully as it should be. That's my hope anyway. It doesn't always go that way. So when it falls a little flat, I always go back to, okay, where are we misaligned? What, where did I, where did I miss the, miss the ball? Or where did, where did what you say, what you said, it hit me differently? Because this is what I took from this conversation. And that's why I got this. Um, so I, I, I used to take it super personally, like, I'm a designer, so it's art, right? To me, it's just like, I'm putting my heart, I'm bleeding on this page for you. And I, I came up with this thing, you know, in sweat and tears and you, and you don't like it. How dare you? You know, it's because it's my thing. It's like, come, I, it, I poured it out of my, my blood for you. Um, so I used to be really, really uh, um, just in the dumps if people say, oh, no, I'm not really feeling it. I'm like, how could you say that? You know, like I've worked on this for 40 hours. Um, but now it's more like, more like, okay, well, how can we, how can we make it exactly what you love, you know, and what is it? So I just go back to strategy brain. I was like, okay, where's, where, where are we missing the mark? What is it that, what is it that you're reacting negatively to? How can we fix it? Um, what will represent you? What do you feel will represent you better? Um, so I, I, I tend to like have 
just tweaked my own mind to be more open for criticism, I think. Um, being a designer, I'm, you know, I'm very emotional. <laughs> so when I do, when I feel things, I feel things. And it's been, it's taken, it's taken a lot of years to like, not feel, not feel uh, completely, you know, slighted when people don't like my stuff. I'm like, so not that I'm the greatest designer in the world or, 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 or is anyone really, but it's, it's more, it's a, you know, you have to, you have to realize that everything's subjective in this, in this case, but strategy is very, very much more uh, objective, you know, which is cool because it's like, all right, well, it's, it's art that represents data and, 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 and not the other way around. Right. It's, it's not, it's not just black and white. There is an art to it, but um, so helping them walk through how I've come up with things really, really helps both of us to understand and me not to get my feelings so hurt when they don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mario, you're so sensitive. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and, and that's what I do love about strategy. I mean, that, you know, two great things come out of it. You have the shared experience oftentimes with the client. And so they have like a, a sense of like, you know, what ended up on the cutting room floor, why you made certain choices. You know, I had this, um, uh, stand-up comedy coach. And, and before we started, he said, look, you know, we're going to make a lot of choices and they're just choices, you know, and, and we're, we're just making choices and we're just going to like, you know, pull things in, take things out. Like, don't get so like hung up on the choices. And, and I sometimes, you know, say that with clients, like sometimes we're just going to make a choice here and, you know, and it's, we'll, we'll see if it's the right one, but at least it's a shared experience. They understand why we made that choice. And then much to your point, you know, you know, ever since really leaning into strategy, get far less of the, I don't like it. You know, there's nothing more frustrating. And, and it made me think of your experience with that creative director where you like, you come in and you're like, look at all this work. And they're like, I don't like it. And you're like, well, why don't you like it? <laughs> Just like, like well, yeah, well, at least he had, at least that director had like reasons, information he was holding. Yeah. For I mean, I work with so many businesses that are like, yeah, you know, like they, they, they can't articulate it is where I'm going with this. And, yeah. and strategy becomes this shared nomenclature where we can start to talk about, well, does that visual design, you know, does that represent your values to your point? Does it represent your purpose statement? Like what, what about it isn't working? We chose, we made a choice on this color because we're trying to differentiate from the competition. So let's, you know, it, it just gives us this like ability to have a conversation. And I think that's yeah. really, really awesome versus, and I do think, you know, back to my early clients before I was like really doing strategy, it was like, I was executing and they didn't like it. And I'm like, why? Like I, and, and probably one of the reasons, and I'm just realizing this now talking to you that I was so hurt was because I didn't know, right? Like yeah. I didn't, I didn't know why they didn't like it. And I didn't have really uh, a vocabulary or a process or a framework to figure out why they weren't happy. And I think, you know, strategy allows us to do that because we've, we've built this common language over the course of an engagement. We can have those conversations. We can point to different things and you can say specifically, Hey, did, did I get this thing wrong? Because that's, what's informing this piece, which, which I think is great. Yeah. It's just that little piece of what you just said right now is like going into, I think for me now with strategy, even with design, with, with anything that I produce for a client, I go in before when I was younger, I'd go in like, like not wanting to hear the negative, not wanting to talk about the negative, only wanting to talk about the positive. Here's all this great stuff. Boom. I love it. Here it is. Pay me my money kind of thing. Right. And now it's like, <laughs> now it's like, Hey, did I get this right? Are, are you feeling this? And I'm like, I'm asking for negative feedback from the get go because I really want, I'm, I'm really concerned about like wanting it to be right for them. And I want them to just love it. And the best is when I present and, and they're just sitting there, just like no expression, nothing on their face. And they're just like looking at me. I've asked them questions and they're just like, you know, not just kind of nod in their head, nothing. So I'll, I'll go through a whole presentation. And at the end, they're like, man, that was awesome. And I'm like, oh man, you're freaking me out the whole time because, you know, like I'm thinking you're hating it, but they're just like kind of absorbing all this stuff because, you know, it's really, it's really just a, a compilation of, of, of inspiration from what they've said, how they, how they present themselves and 
presenting it back to them in a way that they they couldn't do for themselves and that's really exciting to me but but yeah it's it's that it's that uh going in asking the negative has changed a lot of of the way i i can process that stuff now because i asked for the critique i love that that's so great like coming in and just <laughs> full on asking for you know yeah. asking and expecting the negative not looking and hoping for positive reinforcement i think that's that's so positive and it seems to me that that's a little adjacent to uh something that our mutual friend christo talks about a lot it's just kind of coming in empty you know and coming in without yep. expectation and so whether or not you're asking for the negative but certainly coming in and not expecting to be carried out of the room on shoulders but expect like <laughs> hey like what's coming in empty and 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 i think that's so powerful and i'm you know from our conversation i'm going to take that away for sure this idea of like asking for the negative i love it thanks man yeah hey man any, anytime anything i can i can do to to help anybody i'm stoked on <laughs> yeah, well if anyone's watching this uh uh what a what a golden golden sort of insight right there <laughs> because it sounds simple but it's it's so hard to do and, and and so powerful you know why don't we uh shift gears a little bit and you know you and i have both been creating a, a ton of content and yeah. uh what do you think man what's what's going on with content like you like it's a big big thing right it's a yeah, man when i was challenged in 2019 to like i challenged myself to kind of build a personal brand and then later on in that year i was challenged by by chris to start producing just all kinds of content He's like, you know, try this carousel thing, you know, try this, try that. You know, I think, I think that would fit your content pretty well. And um, I'm, I'm kind of a teacher at heart. I'm, I'm definitely a mentor. Um, and it's just, it's just the way I write. It's the way I speak. So I tried it and uh, it was really interesting to just put ideas out there that people were, were identifying with and, and being helped by so now, um, you're more than a year later, as I'm just kind of just blaring content out, um, it's probably one of the most, it's probably one of the best ways to share your brand is to produce content, share your thoughts and give people a unique perspective on who you are and how you work and what you're, what you're excellent at. And it doesn't happen right away because, you know, content takes time to, to develop, right? And especially from the, from the person that's creating it. Um, it takes time to, to really see and, and develop uh, what it is. Um, but as we, as you produce it, it really becomes this, this visual, this visual and, uh, and, I guess, verbal, right, um, piece of you. It, it literally speaks to people about who you are, what you're about. And, uh, and it's so powerful that, it's so powerful that I, I include that suggestion to every one of my clients that they need to be producing content. And if they're not producing content, then they're gonna be missing out on everything that, that content brings with it, which is connection with their audience by far. What about you? Oh man, big, big question. But I, I know <laughs> it's interesting. Like I got my career started in a way, creating some of the biggest content that you could create. I was, I was working in the movie business. I was working on movies. I was writing movies. Um, I, I actually wrote one of the very first video games for Warner Brothers. It was based on a so movie. Cool. It was like, you know, came on a CD-ROM. It wasn't like, I always think back, I'm like, man, like, if I would have stayed in the video game business, so, <laughs> but I never really saw it in that way. And I think I miss, I, I just didn't see it correctly, you know, because even movies are about connecting with an audience. And I just, um, you know, I had my own reasons. I just loved the movies so much. I just wanted to be a part of that. And I just wanted to, to, to write them. And I was, that was my skill. I was able to write. So I was like, all right, I'll go be a writer in the, in the movie business. But after that, I kind of think of my life as like, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic as far as content. And I had been creating content, mostly blogs, right? And I was writing a lot of blogs and, and it was painful. And I fell into 
um, two categories. I'd either blog about what inspired me, uh, which was typically not well read, or I'd try to, or I'd, or I'd blog about things that were um, strategic through SEO, and I hated writing them because it was just, you know, this like formulaic process. It just felt, it just didn't feel good. And I also had a really hard time uh, just having that that flow. And 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 so prior to the pandemic, for me, like Instagram and all that stuff, that's just where I threw up my my snowboarding photos. That's where my family vacation and pictures of my food went, you know, and, uh, and it really was a, a, a chance presentation from Chris. He had such a huge influence on me. And I don't even, I mean, I've, I've mentioned it to him, but I don't really think he knows like, um, and I showed up and, and he was teaching about carousels and he was doing a, a thing on carousels uh, for, for the pro group. And, and it, I don't know what happened, but something clicked for me. I've always wanted to be a content creator. I felt like I had something to say. I want to be a YouTuber, but uh, editing and all that was just really difficult to be consistent. Um, you know, fast forward and I'll, I'll kind of finish the story, but uh, getting involved in some sort of content became a gateway drug to you, like to video. Like it, it allowed me to be better here on video, but I couldn't have done it without kind of this yeah. experience in carousels. And, and what I realized is carousels, was built for me as a writer as well. And, and, <laughs> and it was so awesome. And I, I call it like poetry for business, but to your point, like I thought I had a voice, I thought I had a brand, but what it's allowed me to do is test things out to find my voice, to, um, to get out there, to interact, to see what people care about, to see what I care about. Um, over this past year, you know, I, I think uh, I started with less than 500 followers right now i'm knocking on 21,000. uh it's insane to me that's awesome. going yeah it's going well and and even in this last month i made a commitment to myself to post every day a carousel every day and i'm coming oh. up, i'm coming up on that that like month and i'm going to slow it down because it's just too much it's, it's unsustainable but it has also forced and you said something earlier in our conversation about this idea between art in, in let's just call it work or, or a functional job. And it's allowed me to not think of every piece of content I put out there as this, this artistic thought, is this opus I'm creating, uh, even when I don't feel like it. You know, Stephen Pressfield talks a lot about being a pro and showing up. And like with this commitment, yeah. I have to show up and write and write my carousels and get them done. And some I'm like, eh. And, and I post them and, and they do awesome. And others, I have like others where I'm like, this is going to be so great. This is my best thought of all time. And no, one, no one likes it. That's okay too. Because I'm creating so much that it's, um, you know, my sensitive ego isn't hurt because it's just another thing on um, yeah. radar. And it also allows me to, to work out my thoughts. So I've been working on a keynote around branding, you know, for, for, for businesses. And I have this opportunity. And now I have all these ideas and all these thoughts that I've, that I've put out there and, and I've thought about and I can test and see what resonates. And I'm always, I'm surprised, like, you know, that most of the posts are either like, tell your personal story or some sort of like, like uh, checklisty kind of posts, those typically perform the the best. Uh, I don't yeah. dislike personal stories, but I can't tell one every day, and I hate check, <laughs> I hate checklisty posts because uh, I'm like, ah, like this is just a checklisty post. Uh, but people love them. And to your point, I mean, it's the best thing I've ever done. Uh, I look at it. I, I recommend it to clients as well. We're starting to mimic this process of carousels to LinkedIn to slide share for our clients. Yeah. And, um, it, because it's a process. And I think that really good content creation is consistent. You have a process. It doesn't feel like this thing that's sucking the life from you. It actually gives me energy. Like someday I want to figure out how I just sit around and create my own content. Cause I like it. It's, I think it's fun. <laughs> um, and, and as it, it's been the best thing ever, as I mentioned, my follower growth has been huge. Um, you know, but that's also, you know, allowed me to get leads and clients. And I think more importantly, and, and you mentioned this, it's just really helped me develop a, a solid point of view. It's helped me explore different areas. It's made me think, how do you teach this topic in a very concise bit um, to, to people? And uh, so it, it's been the greatest thing I've done. And I, I look back and over the past year and I'm just like, why did it take a global pandemic for me to like start creating content regularly? And I think it's the single greatest thing you can do as a business or an entrepreneur to help uh, move yeah. forward. Yeah. I think if, if you are, if you are a writer or a creator of any, anything, you need to just be creating. And I think that's, it's a, it's a piece of our soul that gets fed when we do that as creatives, right. Um, that, that we, we are able to just 
stay healthy in that way where we're where we're as we create we stay healthy in that in that in that place um and so why wouldn't you want to do that why wouldn't you want to create new ideas why wouldn't you want to understand why you think the way you do or how to teach certain things that you've never really taught before but you definitely have a process of teaching and people can really use your insight um with everything that you everything that you know everything that you do why wouldn't you want to teach that to somebody else um and so yeah i i can't that your growth is fantastic so you've only been posting carousels the whole time the whole time um i started at a recommendation of my friend who had a, a social media agency i was doing uh, asking permission for guest posts uh, and saying, hey, here's a piece of content. I was reposting. Uh, I've stopped doing that because uh, we were on a clubhouse of Chris and he was like, your feed looks like, uh, you know, you're going to be misleading. And one of the things like, literally, if you want to like get under my skin or hurt my feelings is, is insinuate that like, I'm misrepresenting myself or that, you know, that, or that someone <laughs> else might think that I'm misrepresenting myself. So immediately, like I cut that out. And so it's just all my own carousels. Uh, yeah. And that's all I post uh, just carousels. I, you know, I'm rethinking that strategy because it's been an amazing journey, but it's, it's, it's taken a lot of output. And so, uh, yeah. and a lot of energy. And so I'm trying to think, well, how can I continue to uh, show up and, and do some things? And, you know, for me, I, I'm still not even sure really where I'm going to go on Instagram. It's funny. I, you know, I had like one post where I told the story about my father-in-law and I think I had like, I don't know, 300 likes or something like that. And Insta, I put over on, uh, LinkedIn, same exact post, same exact post. It goes like, it's got like 25,000, you know, wow, views or something like that. And insane. a huge amount of likes and all this kind of stuff. So um, it, 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 it's been great. My, my goal was to get to 10,000 so I could get the swipe up and I'm not even using it. Like I never put like a link in there because I just don't. Uh, I probably need to get better at that too. And it becomes like this, this full-time job. And so I'm also trying to figure out, you know, how do we optimize it? Um, I love video. I love YouTube too. Like I mentioned, I think video is so powerful. I just anecdotally, I mean, yeah. there's all this data, but I anecdotally look at my own behavior and habits and everything always drives back to YouTube. I'm like, oh, I can't figure out this thing and go to YouTube, you know? And, uh, and, and so it's, you know, such a powerful search engine. And I think there's tons of legs left. I don't think it's like all dried up or anything like that. Um, you know, I, I have a podcast and it's really hard for, you know, an audio only kind of podcast to get distribution and to, to pay off for the amount of work you put into it. And I've moved more to doing um, video interviews, but even then it's like, you know, like Apple podcasts are like, they're not indexing your, your podcast, yeah. you know, it's not searchable. And uh, there's things you can do. We, we uh, transcribe it and things like that and hope that it gets picked up, but you know, there's a lot of content out there. So I don't know, a little yeah. bit of a ramble, but yeah, I love, <laughs> I love what Instagram's done. And, and more than anything, I, I feel like it's just opened up that window that you described to be a creator, you know, and to have, you know, and to be yeah. successful. And what I mean by success is creating, not about engagement or likes. I, I really don't look at that stuff that much. It's like, I, you know, for me, it's like putting stuff out into the world and testing it and, kind of seeing seeing what I think about things which I love you know yeah I just I'm, I've, I've been so I think thankful just for for the journey of it and just the creating part of it because it's it's forced me to 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 test a lot of things that I really wouldn't have otherwise you know and just uh testing ideas of myself, testing things that, why do I think this? And, and can I teach this? And is this something that people want to hear? And is this useful for people? Um, and then, you know, my, my goal is always to just help somebody, you know, with something. Um, that's, that's what I hope to do. So um, yeah, and content, contents, man, it just, it's, for me, it, it, it was just became a, a, a visual and verbal diary for myself and i was just uh able to to have this this archive of my thoughts and my 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 thinking and 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 design but more just um just my thinking and my my thoughts and and so um it's been it's been great it's been probably one of the best things that i've i've done this last few years is start creating content yeah i wonder why i waited so long so if you're if you're on the sidelines or thinking about it, like, do it, just do it. And just do it. Um, just do it. Yeah. It also has given me the ability to 
to not be so sensitive to put things out in the world. And it's, it's given me a thicker skin and, you know, Hey, like this doesn't matter. And it's not the end all be all. And I think, I mean, like I, the amount of time that I spent laboring over the decision to turn my Instagram from like my photo album to like talking about business was huge. Like I was worried that people were going to think I'm like some sort of spammer that I'm talking about my business on Insta. Like no one wants to hear about that. I mean, I was, I was chewing myself up inside over that decision, you know, and then I did it. And I was like, like, I, I think it's like hilarious looking back. I'm like, why was I so <laughs> nervous about it? But I think a lot of people have that experience, whether it's, you know, transitioning the account or just putting themselves out there and, 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 and going for it and what you'll find. And what I found was a couple of things like, you know, everybody cares and nobody cares, you know, at the same time, like you yep. get engagement, people think it's cool, but it's like, you know, also no one really cares. And you can, it's, you can put things out there and some people aren't going to agree with you. And, and, and to your point, like I, I had someone on LinkedIn that kind of accused me of plagiarism uh, on a post and, and wow. uh, you know, and, and like, I was really mad and I, I wanted to like go after them and flame them. And I, I took like a, a breath and then I took, you know, kind of that, that, that axiom, like, like, how do I know, like what they're saying is true? Like, how, like, why do they believe it to be true? Uh, and they were like, they were kind of right. You know, like I didn't properly attribute something that I thought I did. It was, it was unclear. And, and uh, that was like, that was like crazy feedback, but I share that because it was like, it was like, I was combative about it at first, you know, like, and, and, I, and I, and it hurt, but it's made me learn that like, even when there's um, maybe negative feedback or something, uh, it could have been delivered a little bit nicer. Could have been, you know, but they they weren't they, they weren't they weren't incorrect in 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 what they had to say, and and it's just taught me a ton. And so you put yourself out there, and you know, you interact and become a thought leader. And I'll just keep continuing to do it. But and 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 also, I think people think that they're going to run out of things to say. And you know, you just heard yeah. me say I've been posting like crazy. And there's always something. There's always something. There's I, always something. Yeah. And the cool thing is like, you can even go back into your, your, your older content and refresh it and use that as a new post. And it becomes, it becomes something new for your current audience that wasn't around when you posted that the first time. And I think there's, there's a really cool thing about like the refreshing of our audiences that, you know, the audiences that have seen the last 15 posts of mine may not have seen the last 200 posts of mine so i can actually go back and bring up older ideas and not that they're changing but to refresh them and and, and repackage them and, and represent them um for for a, a newer current audience um which is great and it even going back and doing that spawns even more ideas off that same subject which is cool um to your point of, of plagiarism and negative feedback i kind of hurt somebody's feelings recently with a post of mine <laughs> not not intentionally um but i had been i had been wanting to post this this do this post and i was and it was just in the back of my mind just i, I knew what i wanted to say i was just there um and i had written a note to myself because i had this like content note with like just ideas um and so somebody posted something i was like oh i should do that post that i was thinking about because it 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 inspired me to do the one that I wanted to do. And uh, and that person who I, I, I think is a very dear friend, they just, they, they texted me later and they're like, oh, I, I was really hurt by your post. And, you know, I, I can't believe like you, you, you were, if you were mad, please tell me. I'm like, what are you talking? I have no idea what you're talking about. And, um, but the, the titles of our posts were in direct opposition. And so they felt that I was I was taking action upon on them on social media, and I was like, I would never do that. <laughs> First of all, I would never do that. But it was funny because we were in in the post, we were actually saying the same thing. But my my title was very controversial to um, to in kind of look look like it was the opposite of what they were saying. But I was I was actually saying that you know it was about design school. And, you know, so I was like, no, you do have to go to design school. But then I defined schooling and I defined education as something that is not traditional, you know, and, and you do have to, you do have to learn, you have to learn the rules. You have to do it. So anyway, 
Um, but a, a friend of mine who got really got really bent out of shape, and they felt like I I took I took offense to what they wrote, and they were very sad. So I had to mend that relationship right away. But it's funny because it, content becomes powerful once you start getting a, a bigger following, and you don't really realize it because you're just you just creating content, right? <laughs> Yeah, totally. I mean, and I've had a few of those incidents where it's just like, I get emotional, but like, I think, you know, what I've learned is you just give it some time, you reach out to the person, you, you talk yeah. about it. And it, 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 it's always been never as bad as I perceived it. And, it, and, and I've always learned something from it. So, uh, and, and that's what, you know, content's supposed to do. I mean, here we are, you're in Hawaii, I'm outside of Boulder, Colorado. The other day, I was talking to someone who was from Italy, like, I mean, the the power the connection and, and that's really what it's all about is like let's have a conversation yeah. like I, I i do want you to to disagree if you disagree but i want you to like tell me what you think not just disagree i want to like hear why you disagree and you know i'm i'm, I'm yeah. not the expert on uh the world you know that i have opinions <laughs> and i put them out there and i, I have a de definite a world view but i respect other world views and i think that's you know where social and content can be amazing yeah. And speaking to the, the opposite of what you just said, you, you were speaking to somebody in Italy uh, the other day. I mean, I, I have, you know, I think we do this and the more we do this, we speak to people all over the world all the time. Um, but today I actually had a call with somebody in my, in Oahu, in Hawaii. And I, that, that never happens. And they, they connected with me through my content on Instagram and it was really hilarious to me. It was like, I, I, I asked them where they were from. And like, oh, you know, I'm on Oahu. I'm in, you know, Pearl City, whatever. I started laughing. I was like, wow, that's really funny because I never talked to anybody in Hawaii ever because it's because I'm always talking to people at least in California. And that's that's as close as they get to me. But, you know, I'm talking to people in Iceland and Sweden and in Denmark and, you know, where anywhere else, but but where I'm from or where I am which is hilarious to me is the other side of that content thing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's great though. I mean, I think it's, it's amazing. And, and I've had the same thing. I've had clients locally who I know have been re-engaged or remembered to call me because of content. And they're like, oh yeah, Mark and his business, they do that and they have the need and, um, you know, and, and purely can, can tie it right back to content. So it is just so powerful. Yeah. And, uh, so great. Yeah, man. It's cool. Cool stuff. Cool. All right. Well, we can <laughs> probably put a pin in it there. We've, uh, we've sure, been talking man. for a while, but uh, yeah, that was, that was a ton of fun. That was a ton of fun. I mean, it's always, it's always, uh, it's always great to talk to somebody who's uh, had more of a career than, you know, than, than other people. I talk to a lot of young creatives usually, and it's really about like helping them get through whatever they're going through. But um, it's really great to talk to more experienced bearded, um, strategists, <laughs> little, gr little gray in the beard. Yes. A little I, gray uh, in the beard, little yeah. gray in the beard. <laughs> yeah. We, we could talk about that too. Uh, <laughs> we will, we will, we'll talk about that next time. <laughs> well, that was a ton of fun, Mario. What I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll create a Google folder and send you the link. If you want to, I'll, I'll give you access to sure. it. And then if you want to drag whatever you recorded and, uh, I'll probably have our editor go ahead and, and chop it up a bit and uh, obviously give you access sure. to any of the files and do whatever you want with them and make sure you tag the crap out of me and whatever you post and I'll comment. And, Absolutely, uh, man. It'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> I'll do the same. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. This is, is totally a lot of fun. Um, let's figure out, uh, let's do a live or something. I don't know. Let's, let's, I think, I think it's fun to like talk to more, like I said, like senior strategists and senior senior creatives because we have a lot more perspective on things and i like the way that we have we come at it from different angles right you're coming at it from a uh really the the messaging and the words angle um and i'm i'm i definitely coming from the creative angle but but there's a there's a place in the middle that we we meet very strongly so um be fun to do some kind of like just instagram live strategy session and helping people let's figure let's Totally. Be fun. Yeah, I love it. Let's do it. Uh, All right, man. Yeah, be good. Enjoy the rest of your day. Go take care of those kiddos. Keep them, keep them locked <laughs> in the house. And uh, <laughs> we'll be good. All right, man. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. And that is Mario. What can, what can I say? What, did you learn something? What an incredible, incredible conversation. I'd say my two biggest takeaways from that conversation. One, 
coming in empty, just forgetting everything, coming in with a blank slate so that you don't come in with any bias. Two, leading with the negative. I mean, who does that? Thank you, Mario. I'm so grateful for our conversation. Uh, I hope you, the audience, learned something. Please, if you like these videos, go ahead and click the subscribe button. That really helps us to create more content. And let us know in the comments uh, what your biggest takeaway was, as well as do you have anything you want us to cover in future videos? So uh, get, get active in those comments and we'll, we'll talk to you soon.